Hi, and welcome to uh, the GitHub Advanced Security Roundup. I'm Justin Hutchings, and I'm a product manager on GitHub's security team. Today, I'll give you a very brief introduction to the state of software security, tell you about some of the things GitHub has been working on that can really help you protect yourselves from the modern security threats that are out there. So let's start by touching base on the state of software security. And I need to acknowledge, I can't tell you everything about software security in a 20 minute talk. We could spend hours on any one chunk. Um, here at GitHub, we're really focused on understanding security from the developer's point of view, because empowering developers to build secure code is one of the best ways to move the needle on your security story. Now, there's a ton of great data in the state of the Octoverse report this year, but one of the things that I like to point out is how developers introduce security vulnerabilities at a relatively constant rate with every line of code that's written. And that's not me criticizing developers. Uh, I don't write the code, and I know just how hard it is. This should really underscore that writing secure software is really hard. It doesn't matter how smart your team is. It doesn't matter you know, how well you hire. There's a reason that MITRE has so many different CWE buckets. It's because as humans, we tend to introduce the same kinds of problems over and over again. You know, another great source for context on the ecosystem is Veracode's State of Software Security Report. And that tells us that around 83% of applications have at least one security vulnerability in them. So, if you're not doing something to go and find those and mitigate them, you're putting your users at risk. Whether that's open source or enterprise software, that could be a real problem. But there's reason for hope. And that's because organizations that adopt DevSecOps practices run and run security scans daily reduce their mean time to remediate security problems by around 72% versus organizations that run you know, just a few times a year. And that's a big difference in terms of how long your users are exposed, as well as just how secure you are overall. So that's why we at GitHub have been hard at work with a collection of security solutions that we call GitHub Advanced Security. Within GitHub Advanced Security, we've got three major product areas. The first is secure dependencies. And this is your classic software composition analysis or SCA capabilities. They help you track the software you depend on for vulnerabilities. Considering that you know, as much as 90% of the code on GitHub depends on open source, vulnerabilities in your supply chain are more important than ever. The next area is secure code. And this is our set of features that handle static analysis security testing or SAST. While SCA looks for vulnerabilities in code you depend on, SAS looks for vulnerabilities in code you wrote by analyzing that code and finding bad patterns and data flows. Finally, secure secrets. We know credential leaks are a huge problem, both for security and reliability reasons. I mean, have you ever tried to roll keys on an app where someone hard-coded credentials into the source code instead of putting them into the key vault? It's not going to be a good day. You're going to cause an outage and everyone's gonna be unhappy. So let's drill in. You know, with secure dependencies, we've got three capabilities that are gonna make your life a lot easier. Um, the first one is Dependabot. Dependabot is our trusty robot that watches for vulnerabilities and sends you automated pull requests to help keep things up to date. Dependency review is a brand new capability that we unveil unveiled here today. Um, you might've seen Nat speak about it earlier. This helps give code reviewers insights about the dependencies in your pull requests. And then finally, the dependency graph, which is the plumbing that makes all this possible on GitHub. So Dependabot is a terrific service because it really makes fixing vulnerabilities so easy. It starts by telling you when there are security vulnerabilities in your dependencies. But what makes it special is that it generates a pull request that updates you to the minimum secure version of your dependency, and it even shows you a compatibility score. So you can get a better idea of whether this is likely to cause problems in your app. 
We do this because for every one of these pull requests on a public repository, we look at the CI results associated with repos that are impacted. And then we can aggregate all those insights at GitHub scale to say whether this particular change is likely to cause any problems for you. And this is super effective. You know, we see that repositories that use Dependabot fix their vulnerabilities 1.4 times faster than repositories without it. Dependency review is a brand new capability as well, and this is going to be rolling out over the next few weeks. This is an experience we've added to your pull requests that helps the developers reviewing your code understand the impact of changes in the dependencies in a pull request. Now, this could be as simple as telling you what dependencies you have, all the way through helping you understand whether there are vulnerabilities or whether it has a license that's compatible with your business. We all know somebody that's going to be upset when you check in some GPLv3. This feature is free for open source repositories, and it's available as part of advanced security for our enterprise customers. Finally, the dependency graph is what makes all of our dependency security features possible. It does this by scanning the manifest files for supported package managers and then building out a graph of all the software you depend on. Now, We've got great coverage here. We currently support NPM and Yarn for JavaScript, Maven for Java, NuGet for .NET developers, Composer for you PHP developers, RubyGen for Ruby, and then PyPy for Python. And so for most of you, we've got something. And of course, this is an area that we're constantly looking to improve. So let's look at secure code now. Um, I'll tell you about a few of the things that set, up, set us apart. First, code scanning. This is our integrated developer experience for running SaaS tools and visualizing those results inside developer workflows. Next, we've got CodeQL, which is GitHub's own semantic code analysis engine. And it's the backbone of our secure code offerings. And last, we built our code scanning experience to interoperate with lots of third-party analyzers. So we'll tell you about some of those. Now, if you've ever tried to ask a developer who is otherwise really busy to take security problems seriously, you know how tough it can be because you're competing against so many other priorities. That's why we've made it really easy to view results in code scanning, super easy by integrating those alerts into pull requests and making sure that developers are only blocked when they introduce a net new vulnerability in their code. That way, when you have a lot of security debt, it's not going to come up every day. It's not going to slow you down. It's still there, and we hope you'll fix it, but it's not in your way. You know, code scanning is the best and easiest way to run CodeQL or other analysis tools on GitHub. We've integrated with both the Action CI system as well as some third-party CI systems using a simple CLI. Code scanning is generally available in cloud, and as Maya mentioned in the previous section, will be generally available in the upcoming Enterprise Server 3.0 release as well. CodeQL is the semantic analysis engine that powers our own security analysis. Now, a lot of static analysis tools out there do things like use regular expressions or look at bytecode to try and figure out what's happening. CodeQL, we actually map all the code in your repository into a graph database. And this is uh, special because it allows security researchers to reason over that code and develop queries that can find really complicated vulnerabilities with really high precision. You know, we've open sourced more than 2,000 CodeQL queries on GitHub. And we work with partners across the community to improve these to reduce fa false positives, as well as improve coverage of new types of vulnerabilities. In fact, We've been focused on reviewing the set of CVEs that have been published over the last couple of years and whether our queries would have caught them. You know, as of today, we find that about 24% of recent JavaScript CVEs out there would have been caught by a default CodeQL query on GitHub. And that may not sound like a lot, but go and look how many CVEs there are for JavaScript. It's a lot. And this can really help improve your security posture. Now, CodeQL currently supports seven of the top programming languages out there. 
including C, C++, C Sharp, Go, JavaScript, Java, Python, and TypeScript, of course. We're working on expanding this coverage soon, so I'll just say keep an eye on the roadmap for a little more information there. We're also detecting more than 160 CWEs, or common weaknesses. This includes all the classic problems that you know to look for, like cross-site scripting or denial of service. And you know, I mentioned security researchers earlier, and I think it's an important point to drill in on. The GitHub Security Lab is a coalition we've built with the security research community to help find new vulnerabilities and get them responsibly patched. We've been running a bounty program to encourage participation. And to date, our researchers have found 186 CVEs, including ones like this remote code execution vulnerability Alvaro uncovered in Germany's COVID-19 contact tracing software. And this is the sort of stuff that the security lab does every day. They're going out and trying to innovate to find new vulnerabilities that we can then bring back and inoculate your software against using CodeQL. Of course, we're big believers in defense in depth, which is why we built code scanning to be interoperable from the start. We've been engaging with the broader community of security tool vendors and open source projects to make it really easy to add in scenarios like container scanning, you know, using a tool like Anchor or Trivi or Sneak, um, doing configus code scanning so your YAML and you know, HashiCorp files are all protected or even performing analysis on additional languages with open source tools like Breakman or with any of these commercial products that are, that are in the sidebar. We've done this by building against an open standard that makes it really easy for you to plug in your own tools as well. Now, the reason this is so important is because by bringing all of this together in one user experience, we're making it easier than ever to get security challenges in front of developers before they're a problem for your users. Rounding things out, I want to tell you just a little bit about our secure secret capabilities with secret scanning for both public and private repos. Now, you may know that we've been scanning public repos for secrets for the last couple of years. You might have even seen an email when you made your own mistake checking in an AWS key. Once you check a secret into a public repository and push that to GitHub, you've got to consider it compromised. There's no coming back from that. So secret scanning in public repos is integrated with more than 30 partners who review potential matches in those public repositories and then revoke the secrets from the server side before they can be used maliciously. You know, we're still seeing more than 100,000 potential secrets per week in public repositories because this is such an easy mistake to make. And we're using that exact same infrastructure to help enterprise developers identify secrets in their private code as well. This scans the full history of your repositories, and it provides users with a native experience for triaging secrets that we find in your code. Now, as much as this is a security feature, it's also a reliability feature. You know, I mentioned earlier, rotating secrets can be really problematic. If you've got secrets checked into your code, you know, that can cause big problems because Maybe one of your microservices doesn't use the key vault and the other ones do. So you flip the switch and all of a sudden you've got an outage. Secret scanning is available in beta on both cloud and the upcoming GitHub Enterprise Server 3.0 release. So it's there for you to try and we hope you will. I mentioned partners for secret scanning and we've got a ton of them. We're working from with everyone from you know, big clouds like AWS, Azure, or Google, through developer tools like NPM, Twilio, HashiCorp, or Pulumi. This list is growing all the time as more and more companies work to help their users avoid security risks in the cloud. All it takes is some regular expressions and a webhook endpoint. So if your service produces tokens, I would definitely recommend reaching out to us and we'd be happy to partner with you. You know, that was a very quick summary of some of our security features. And as you leave here today, I want you to go back and review some of your code security best practices. Are you monitoring dependencies? Are you looking at your code or your secrets? If you're not, 
I'd ask that you jump on over to github.com slash features slash security so you can learn more about what we have. Of course, I'd be remiss not to mention just a ton of additional security talks that have already aired at GitHub Universe today. You know, these talks go into more detail about things like CodeQL or dependency review. And uh, if you'd like to learn more, I definitely encourage you to catch up on those videos later on um, on the webcast. With that, thank you and back to the hosts. That was great.